Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rami and it is Sunday night. So you know what that means around here. It means it is succession. And clearly what was the end of democracy? I want to start with what was my favorite line of the episode and then we'll talk about the demise of democracy. It was Kendall's line to me, which was the most powerful line of this episode when he said, maybe the poison drips through. Because isn't that the fear of every survivor of parental narcissistic abuse, that maybe the poison does drip through? The thing is, it doesn't always. In this family, it certainly did, because I think the poison was so concentrated in Logan. But the poison does drip through in that family. It doesn't in all. But in most families, if you have a ragingly narcissistic parent, you're going to have at least one ragingly narcissistic kid. And if it's your family system, it might have been a sibling. But let's face it, can narcissism and democracy go together? I would say probably not. You'd say, but Dr. Romney, there's democracy, to which this episode would leave us saying, is there? And so I think that this to me was the narcissism versus democracy. And clearly narcissism one was very, very fascinating. Now what you're seeing rise to the top is the absolute self-interest of everyone. Whatever Roman's little grief thing was, that seems to have passed because it was fascinating to watch the three chess pieces of Shiv, Roman, and Kendall really, really be focused on each of their, their corporate interests, their ideological interests, and then ultimately their personal interests, right? But even their corporate interests are entirely self-interest. Now, listen, I still, still, still think Shiv is the most like her father. And so it is, I mean, listen, it's almost like a bit of glee watching when the malignant narcissistic person's plot falls apart. But what is so interesting is that Shiv has some belief in these, again, the idea in this whole story is right, that Mencken is this sort of dictatorial, almost psychopathic presidential candidate who wins because the media decides he wins. There is no democracy, right? And in Shiv's case, the candidate she is supporting is obviously a little bit more well-tempered, probably has the interest of the population in mind. But ultimately, there's not a, a, there's not a um, humanitarian bone in Shiv's body. It just so happened that her self-interests are in that direction. And then this was the ultra gaslight episode, right? Her gaslighting Kendall, Roman gaslighting her. I mean, this is this family sort of mother tongue is to gaslight each other. And Shiv kind of finally got caught in her lies. So I think that there is that, again, that's the delusional grandiosity we see in narcissism. And those chickens came home to roost for a lot of the folks on these episodes. So this is one of those episodes where people's narcissism was sort of catching up with them. This was the episode where it all started, the, the, the foundational cracks started to show. In a way, all of them are trying to be as if you will, good as Logan, but none of them have, I mean, that that's again, that sort of almost that streak of psychopathy that Logan had that they do not. And so as a result, Shiv couldn't keep the lies straight. And Kendall found his allegiances split, but ultimately he didn't choose for his family, right? Kendall ultimately chose the direction that was going to give Kendall power. He likes to think of his, himself as a good parent, as many narcissistic people do. They think of themselves as the parent of the year, but they're always going to make the self-interested choice and then justify or rationalize it as the right choice. And that was done there, even as he's driving home and saying, hey, can I say the, see the kids? The wife, meanwhile, is living in a state of terror, or, as are the children. And he made the decision that worked for him. And then he's going to clean up the mess afterwards. That's very much sort of narcissistic parenting. Roman, not surprisingly, has made his deal with the devil, and it's a deal that's going to pay out for him. So let's go back a little bit in this sort of, you know, in this episode. We see, as always, Greg remains sort of the devil's errand boy and is no different in this particular episode. You know, every narcissistic person needs this kind of a, a sort of, th this kind of um, sort of punching bag, and Greg is that, right? But Greg also has the information and is very aware of what sort of sort of Shiv's deal with the devil is in terms of Lucas. So with Greg, what is so interesting in watching him in this sort of Aaron Boy capacity is how Tom needs his punching bag. Tom clearly, as we always knew, was in over his head. 
The man can't make a decision. He is not a leader. He doesn't. Again, he tried to get that kind of aftermarket narcissism. He didn't have it before he came into the family. He was very, um, he was very ambitious and he made the mar marriage with Shiv, but he's not made of the same DNA. He comes from those ordinary Midwestern type people and th their family was sort of normal people. He can't play this game. And the way everything fell apart at ATN, that was very, very clear. But my, my favorite line from Tom was, you know, when, when, when Greg said, Tom, I don't do coffee anymore, Tom says to him, I want you gregging for me, which forever will, should stick for all of us. Let's take a little bit of a sideline over to Connor. In Connor, we see a really excellent illustration of what delusional grandiosity looks like. Connor is actually, was actually delusional enough to believe that he had a chance. He really, really was. I mean, he went into that when those early returns were coming from some of those states and Mencken was winning the states. I think Jimenez won one of the states as well. He actually thought he had a chance. It's this delusional grandiosity that creates a confidence that actually is why a lot of people get pulled in by narcissistic people, because most of the rest of us aren't that confident. We're like, mm, I don't know if I have a chance. Like, we're very circumspect. If anything, we're almost neurotic. The narcissistic person at that level is, again, delusional in their grandiosity. Of course, I could run for president and win. Then he gives that completely insane is the only speech way I can describe his speech. Insane speech when it was time for him to go. So I think, you know, his, <clears throat> his goose is cooked. So he's sort of done. The touch screen is malfunctioning was sort of, again, that entire, that was sort of a metaphor for what this was, right? Technology was failing them that they, yeah, they sure they had these backups, but the touch, the touch screen is malfunctioning was emblematic of Tom trying to sit at the, at the adult table. He didn't have it. And it was just really, he was out of his game. It was fascinating to sort of watch that unraveling and also sort of pathetic. But there was another big theme in this episode that I think is so relevant to narcissism, which is the shaping of the narrative, right? Any of us who've ever been in a narcissistic relationship of any kind, family, intimate relationship, workplace relationship, it's all about the narcissistic people being so clever at shaping the narrative that always makes them look good. And that narrative piece went through all of that. There is no democracy. It's simply the narrative. It's the narrative the news wants to put out, the media wants to put out because the media benefits from an affiliation. It was when the sort of like dictatorial president gets up there, he's shaping the narrative. He's like, if I do lose, I need my narrative shape. Part of the struggle that many people we face living in a narcissistic world and in narcissistic relationships is that narcissistic people are so much better at selling, shaping, and spinning a narrative. And because of that, if you're in the face of any of that, you're confused as hell. This entire episode was about narrative at all levels, at the societal and media level, at the family level, and even at the individual level. If you tell the story enough, people believe it. And that is what has happened to all of these people. And the problem is, and it's a real sort of, this episode was a real commentary on society and the ultimate demise, like I said, of, of democracy. The sense is no, there's no longer democracy. They're, they're trying to, you know, this idea of that it's really about narrative and we are not even really voting. It's just a narrative is being sold and people are buying. It. And that's what that, that episode really was. There was a moment in the show, going back to Greg, to who, again, you know, to me, Greg is still, he's literally balanced on that razor's edge of is Greg narcissistic or not? As a betting person, I'm saying he's, he's absolutely on his way. I'm 95% certain that's where we're headed with him. But there was that micro minute where Greg kind of had the fantasy that he held the fate of democracy in the Western world in his hands, that he was going to march down to the news floor and say, we're calling the election in Arizona. And that moment, you can see that they, everyone in the show, now that Logan is gone, everyone in the show has all this power now, right? They're holding all this power, but almost like a child who may say, I can be in charge, I can be in charge. And if somebody actually, almost like giving a seven-year-old the keys to the car, the seven-year-old's like, mm, I don't think I can drive this. I don't think I can do this, right? That's what it often feels like when you watch these characters. And narcissistic people are often people who like to, they like to think they can be the seven-year-old who drives the car. But honestly, none, all of the characters in the show 
just like with any narcissistic person, have the self-regulation capabilities of a child. But as all these characters do, not only have adult responsibilities, they have incredibly important adult responsibilities. So each time they're faced with the magnitude of the power they hold, you saw this with Tom, you saw to some degree saw this with Kendall, you saw Shiv and how she was behaving in the face of this. But the Greg moment when he knew he held this piece of information and was kind of lost and dizzy with what it meant, obviously it didn't matter. Anyone could have texted Tom, but there was a moment there and you could see it was more anxiety than anything else. And that sort of always kind Kind of the the tipping point between narcissism and psychopathy the psychopathic person is always going to be cool and very level-headed even when this you know this seeming extraordinary amount of power is given to them they've got it figured out their nervous systems don't get activated for a narcissistic person even though they sort of they they tantrum away and want all the power and control when it's finally given to them they're, they're often really riddled with self-doubt Again, something we really do see here. Something interesting here is shaping between Roman and Kendall. Kendall actually showed a little bit more of an interesting balance. Like he was trying to balance the needs of his family. Obviously, it's ultimately threw them under the bus. The, the reality of like, wow, we're dismantling demo democracy. That doesn't feel very good. But also wanting to kill the Gojo deal. He ultimately chose what worked for him, but he was a little bit more circumspect. Roman went in there in some ways much more like his dad. It's as though to me, it's almost as though this is his homage to his father. His grief is slowly resolving. And how is it resolving? He is actually stepping into exactly the kinds of decisions his father would make, the kind of calls his father would have made. He saw how disposable human beings were to his father. To me, Roman's grief working through, as we might see in any kind of narcissistic familial or parental relationship, Roman working through his grief about his father is Roman becoming his father. So I found that to be very interesting. We saw a very different Roman in this episode, which I found very to be very, very fascinating. Um, but that, that line that Roman made, and it was really, this was not only an episode about narrative, but the other piece we know about narcissism is all narcissistic relationships are transactional, all of them. And usually the transaction is around supply. Well, the transaction here, was leveling democracy, right? And so what Roman was willing to do was transact in that space, get what they needed, the deal they wanted by basically, you know, using the news media to kind of manipulate an election. And so the, that line of he's a guy we can do business with, it was that, again, that, that the more unethical people you have, the easier it is for a narcissistic person to do business. And so this definitely for all three of them will work, but at this point, you know, Shiv has gone off into her sort of renegade direction. We'll have to see what that's going to look like. Um, and then on top of that, as Roman dismantled democracy with, you know, the way he wanted the election called, he was even more dismissive saying, we just made a night. We just made a night of good TV. Like I said, this is Roman becoming his father. Again, real pivot from what it's been. And so this should cycle out to the end of it. Roman has now sort of found his father's spirit. And we're on the eve of the funeral. Again, this dude is still not buried. So he's still in his strange way pulling strings. But what you're starting to see is that they're not as they're not feeling as puppeteered by their father, Roman kind of coming into his own for sure. Um, let's see. And then... Okay. And then a final point I wanted to make was another gaslighting term Roman kept using was false flags, false flags. This false flags to me is such a gaslighting term. We hear it in the media quite a bit too. And it is that idea of like, well, if you don't like what someone is saying, it's a false flag. I think it speaks to what American political discussions have become. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. It's that everyone feels like somebody has a different opinion than me. They're gaslighting me. It's actually not how gaslighting works. When Shiv lied about the phone call to Nate, that was gaslighting, right? And was trying to kind of back out of that, that was gaslighting. But the whole false flag thing, a little bit, a little bit of one, but not, I mean, again, this really got to him. Mean, it was a very much, a, it was an episode of our times, right? Again, when you put narcissism and democracy together and shake it up, it's a bit of oil and water. But the fact of the matter is, folks, narcissism has been there longer than democracy has. And so we have still tried to manage, or maybe we never really have succeeded at that. 
but I don't know that media had the same function. This episode shows us that when you have when you have narcissism, plus the capacity to create manipulated narratives, plus democracy, that story is not going to end well, except for the narcissistic kids in the Roy family. So them's my thoughts. Two more episodes to go. For some reason, I thought tonight was the last episode. So I kind of was like, hmm, that was a little bit anticlimactic. Don't know where that came from. But I hope you enjoy the episode. As I can say, like I said to me, the real ringer here is that um, is that Roman is getting through his grief. And how is he getting through his grief? He's becoming dad. It's what we see. Thanks so much. <laughs>